In 2007, we presented evidence that a generic drug with a very simple structure, resembling vinegar, had the ability to decrease cancer growth by changing the metabolism of cancer cells in the laboratory. At that time, we were one of the first groups to suggest that metabolisms, metabolism could be the target of cancer therapies. Over the following two years, our work was confirmed by the laboratories of many research groups across the world, including Stanford, MIT, Harvard, University of Florida, and others. It was clear that despite the lack of support from the industry, because this is a generic drug, we had to test it in humans. After securing strong support from the university and the Alberta Health Services, we took on the challenge. At first, we collected glioblastoma tumors from 49 patients, and we studied them within minutes from their extraction in the operating room. We showed that when given DCA under the microscope, there was evidence that the cancer mitochondria function would normalize, as our 2007 work had suggested. Importantly, DCA did not have any effects on non-cancer brain tissue that we were obtaining from epilepsy surgery. This strengthened the rationale that this drug might have effects in actual patients. We then proceeded to treat five patients with advanced glioblastoma in whom we secured uh, tissues from before and after DCA therapy. This is very important. We were able to show that DCA killed cancer cells by altering the tumor metabolism, but also that DCA killed glioblastoma stem cells, the cells most resistant to therapies and the ones responsible for tumor recurrences. We were able to show that at a dose that does not have uh, significant toxicity, there was evidence for some clinical benefit as well, although this study was not designed to show clinical efficacy or benefit. So the importance of our work uh, it can be summarized with three points. Number one, it makes a small but critical step in bringing this drug closer to the patients with glioblastoma. Due to the small number of patients, of course, we cannot make any definitive conclusive statements on whether this drug is safe or uh, whether it's effective. Uh, however, we have acquired information, secured information to proceed to the next level of trials that will be designed specifically to show whether this drug uh, works or not. Number two, this is one of the first human studies in cancer that strongly points to metabolism as the target of cancer therapy. The editors of Science uh, Journal, the biggest science journal in the world, uh, had called cancer metabolism as one of the hottest areas across all scientific principles uh, uh, fields for 2010. By studying the mechanism of the drug in human tissues before and after treatment, we can point out to several other targets within metabolism that can be used for other drug development uh, projects. The scientists from MIT uh, wrote uh, an editorial about our paper consider that a major strength of our studies. And because it's important to hear what the other people say about our work, John has copies of this editorial for anybody that is interested. And number three, our work challenges the dogma that you cannot proceed with human trials unless you have industry support. We hope that this work may inspire other scientists to develop translational clinical research with other generic drugs as well. Thank you, Evangelist. Good summary. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, glioblastoma multiforming or astrocytoma grade 4. This is the same tumor. It's the primary tumor of the central nervous system that occurs in approximately 23,000 uh, people um, annually in the United States and Canada. The, uh, this, this is a very, very aggressive and a highly feared tumor. And, and so we have a long way to go with regards to uh, developing therapies. The um, current, with current standard therapy, for example, and that's uh, surgery, radiation therapy, followed by chemotherapy, the time for tumor progression is approximately seven months. So in other words, even on therapy, these people start to progress with their tumors at seven months. The mean survival rate of this tumor is 14.6 months. 
So that's not a very good, that's not a very, very good figure. The five-year survival is less than 10%. If you live more than 10 years, there's probably divine intervention. So, so we have a long way to go. These are very highly uh, uh, heterogeneous tumors. They're very unstable. And the difficulty is that as we're treating uh, these patients, we're actually treating a moving target with mutations that are continually going on during therapy, it's very difficult to capture the tumor in a static phase. So this makes uh, treatment very, very difficult. Now the, uh, the uh, uh, Cancer Genome Atlas uh, Research Network uh, of the NIH uh, has recently shown that glioblastoma is represents really four different uh, genomic tumors. So this is why focus therapy has failed in the past, because you have to have a more holistic approach to, to try and solve this problem. And I think metabolic therapy, um, uh, targeted me metabolic uh, therapy, uh, focusing on mitochondrial function is one way that we can get around this so that it's not overly specific. The five patients that we uh, uh, treated in this study and that we report on, the first patient actually died at three, uh, three months into therapy. And this was a time, <coughs> excuse me, before <coughs> we noticed that it takes about two to three months for the therapeutic level of DC, DCA to appear. So, so these patients are quite vulnerable in the first three months, and we have to be very, very careful. And this is one of the good things about a scientific study is that you can do these pharmacokinetic studies to find these factors. So it does take two to three months to, to get therapeutic levels. So the patient had a big, big tumor, eight centimeter tumor, and it really didn't have much of a chance. The other four patients uh, survived uh, uh, the uh, 18 months. Uh, one was um, incapacitated because the tumor occurred in the motor area and, and rendered very early in her disease uh, hemiplegic. And she uh, uh, remains alive, but uh, is uh, incapacitated from that standpoint. One patient died at 24 months. Uh, this is after he had received uh, standard therapy of uh, surgery, radiation, and multiple chemotherapies, and then was placed on DCA and uh, lived for 24 months, which is very quite impressive. Two patients are doing very well. One patient is without disease, and one patient is um, um, uh, was admitted the last week, and I operated to remove a tumor cyst uh, at that time, but she's, she's stable. So we can't make any, any statements with regards to the efficacy uh, of this type of therapy, but we are enthused with uh, what we're seeing with this very, very aggressive tumor. It's very important to recognize that a large number of people work together for this work. Normally, industry teams that include hundreds of people do the huge amount of paperwork required for these trials. These include regulatory bodies like Health Canada, human ethics committees, legal teams, financing or development teams, and this brings the discovery from the lab to clinical trials. We did that all ourselves. We were impressed by the public response for donations through our website, and we received checks ranging all the way from $10 to thousands of dollars from individuals or groups of people from all over the world. This work would certainly not have been made possible without the support of the University of Alberta and Alberta Health Services. We're grateful and proud to complete this small but important step for a potential treatment of a deadly disease that is supported by so strongly by the people of Alberta and its public institutions in so many ways.